Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Chris Allen of the Conversation Church, where we exist to build disciples and help those who are lost find their way to living a better life through Jesus Christ. We thank you for joining in with us tonight. There is a word from God, and I'm super happy and excited about it. If you love God, if you could follow me over to the book of Habakkuk, chapters 2, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 4. Again, that's the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And when you found it, let's read. It says, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It will describe the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. For it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. For the next few moments tonight, I just want to talk from the thought, understanding what you don't understand. Understanding what you don't understand. Pray with me, Father God of grace, mercy, and love. We thank you, oh God, for this wonderful day that you have given us, oh God. God, I thank you for everyone who is listening tonight. I pray for, I pray for everyone watching tonight, God. Your people have come hungry and yearning for a word tonight, God. So use me as your vessel. Use me like you've never used me before right now, oh God. Hide me behind your cross that your people not see Chris, but see you through me tonight, oh God. Have your way in this message, in this word tonight, oh God right now. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, pleasing in your sight. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. Understanding what you don't understand. You know, in life we're human. We're human. And we've all got questions and we are all trying to go through life understanding the answers to our un un unanswered questions. You know, I think of a lot of us as moving through life like the prophet Habakkuk, and I could never, I could not help but think of him. And so God led me to this text tonight. You know, Habakkuk was a man whose heart was filled with questions. Seek answers and yearn for understanding of how God works, just like most of us try to seek that understanding ourselves. At a time where Babylon was becoming the dominant world power and in the last days of the southern kingdom of Judah, Habakkuk struggled to understand the troubles of the world and why it always seemed the enemy and trouble always wins in the end. Why does it seem like trouble and the enemy always prevails in life? And it seems like the good get held back. And this is what Habakkuk had tr trouble understanding. Habakkuk saw a broken world and it tore his heart apart. And Habakkuk struggled with understanding how God, who was supposed to be just, merciful, and loving, could stand by and see his own people struggle. See, his people facing real issues caused him to wonder a lot of these things. It caused him to wonder why would God work, seem to be working against his own people rather than helping them. Struggled with disappointment and trials and tribulations and how could a God who claims to be just and therefore the poor be willing to sit on the sidelines as his people face their issues of fear, oppression and persecution, lawlessness and immortality not to be heard an answer from their cries. And how could he allow sinful people to punish his people in their sins when they themselves were guilty of sinning? How could God allow the enemy to do that? And Habakkuk wondered this. Habakkuk in our text climbs to a watchtower hoping to be in the best position of hearing a message from God and helping him to understand the cry of his complaint. Habakkuk struggled to understand why would God use the wicked Babylonians to punish his people for their sins? Just like you, you probably wondered why does God always allow your enemy to get ahead of you? When they were not perfect and, and, and they were evil themselves and, and they themselves were sinners and messed up before, before God themselves. Habakkuk wondered how could they be the ones to be punishing his people? How could this be? Sometimes we wonder how our enemies seem to prevail and to be, be better than us or, or get an advantage on life over us. And we get discouraged and we get hopeless and, and we start questioning God. 
And why would God allow it? Habakkuk struggled to understand who God was and why God did some of the things he did in order to fulfill his purpose and his vision. Habakkuk gets a reply back from God in our text and God instructs him to write his answer on tablets and, and his vision about the Babylonians invasion. Just like Habakkuk didn't understand this, it just seemed like evil was winning and the good was losing. But this was all a part of God's plan. Just like Habakkuk in life, we wonder what God's true purpose is and why he does what he does in certain situations of our lives and in our society. We wonder why does it always seem the good stuff suffer more than the evil ones of this world? Why are we always faced with trial after trial? Why are people do what they do and turn their backs on us and stab us in the back? Why does the negative stuff in our neighborhoods are always seem to hit the news before the good stuff? Why do so many people struggle with food, in, with food insecurities? Why do our cities struggle with food deserts in 2021? Why we can't seem to get over the addiction and the problems of our lives? What does it take for me to get a good paying job in this world? What does it take for me to understand that even though doors shut in my face, I still have value in life? What does it take for me to understand my true purpose and identity in life? What does it take for us to understand the how to end homelessness and oppression and, and oppression, how to embrace unity in our world? Why do we live in a hateful world where racial profiling even exists in 2021? We all have questions and we all seek and yearn for understanding for those questions. Habakkuk teaches us that when we don't understand the why or the what of our lives, we have to wait patiently. We have to trust in God and we have to hope in the one who does have the answers to all those questions, that being God. Even when it seems like God has ignored our requests and seems to be ignoring our problems and our situations. We got to wait. We got to wait. Even when we don't understand what God is doing, we got to trust him. We got to trust him. As our text says in verse four, look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked. But the righteous but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. You know, I might not have all the answers. I might not have all the answers I need to get through. I might not understand all the whys and the what's and how everything is going to happen in life. But I trust in the one where my help comes from, that being God. The one that said he never leave me nor forsake me. The one that said that he never seen the righteous forsaken. The one that said... That he is the great I am. I know there is an answer to my unanswered questions and my answered prayers because of my faith and my trust in him. Habakkuk couldn't understand why God was doing nothing to answer his question. Why was God making this decision about the wickedness and destruction that was happening in his society? People of Judah. And he realized that by his faith in God, he would be able to get the answers to his questions. You know, in life, when you don't understand and you have the and you don't have the answers to your questions and your concerns, you have to know that you have to wait on God. It's the first thing you have to know is that you have to wait on God. Now, I know this is easier said than done. Probably like Chris, well, I can't wait on God. I, I, sometimes I need to, you know, as humans, we like to see, we like to see, get those answers as quick as possible. Oftentimes we don't want to wait. We want to answer, we want the answers to our questions right then and there. And, and we don't like people beating around the bush. Just give us it straight and simple in a fast, hairy pace. That's how we are as humans. But what Habakkuk, just like most of us, have to learn is that God does not answer when we want him to answer. But he gives us the answers to our questions in his own timing. And when we when he knows that we are ready, God told Habakkuk in verse three, if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it will not be delayed. Habakkuk didn't want to see enemy his see enemy destroy his people. 
He didn't want to see the enemy destroy his people. He didn't want to see to make it seem like evil was prevailing over his people. He didn't want to see corrupt folk win. He didn't want to see his own people problems win over them. And oftentimes we don't like to see our enemy and our problems win over us. And we're like, God, where are you? Where is your help? But we've got to learn to wait patiently on God's plan and that God has a plan for every single situation. You know, Isaiah 40, 31 states, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We have to understand that God has everything under his control and it's in his authority. And we won't see he won't see us fall. He won't see us fail or grow weary if you wait on his plan. Wait on his plan. But not only that, but we also have to understand that we have to trust God even when we don't understand what's happening around us. Even when we don't understand what's happening around us, we have to wait on God. We have to trust in God. Habakkuk did not understand God's plan and vision for his people. He didn't understand why his people had to be oppressed by the evil Babylonians at that time. And just like him, a lot of times we don't understand a lot of things that's happening around us in our lives and in our communities. Why don't why doesn't everyone have access to affordable health care? Why don't we have more affordable housing options for the less fortunate? Why is there still no cure for cancer? Why is there not more done to combat suicide in our teens? Why did God, who is love, give me parents who did not love me from the beginning? Why does my child abandon me? Why would a God who is love have a world filled with brokenness and homelessness and seems to be oh, absent from the problems of an oppressed people in a world filled with hate, prostitution, murder and scandal? When we look at our lives and our problems around us, they're questions. And we are all seeking to understand and find answers to those questions. But just like Habakkuk, we have to trust in God. We have to trust in God when we don't understand the why we are going through, what we are going through, and how we are going to overcome what we are going through. We have to trust in God when the problems occur and the questions come up in our lives and we just don't understand the answer to them. We have to trust in God. We have to trust in God for who he is. He is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Father. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Everything works together for us. The ones who love him, the ones who care about him, the ones who follow him who study his word. You might not know the plan that God has in the events of your life, but you have to trust that one who made you, the one who chose to love you. You have to choose to trust in him. You have to choose to trust in him because you have to trust that he has a plan, that he has the answer to those unanswered questions in your life. No matter how difficult they seem, no matter how discouraging it may seem because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what the outcome of your situation is going to be. You got to trust in him. But finally, we must have faith above all else when we don't understand what we want to understand. What we need to understand is that we have to have faith above all else. I might not have the answers to all my questions and, and like Habakkuk, I might not understand God's way of doing things fully and, and why things happen in the way they do. I know I don't. Not all the time. Yeah, I pray. I read the Bible. I read my scripture. I do my devotions daily. But sometimes I don't understand some things that happen in life, in my life, 
in the world. But I know that God has a plan. I know that, that God has a plan for everything because he's the creator of everything. I know that, that I have to trust in him when I don't understand everything that seems to be happening around me. But I am only able to get to this point of understanding because of the faith that I have to establish in my relationship with God the Father. In him. See, God told you that he would be there for you in hard times. He told you to trust in him and lean not on to thine own understanding. But in order to get to that point, you have to maintain and have faith in him, which comes from the relationship you have with him. Sometimes in life, you can become discouraged by your unanswered questions. Not knowing what to do or where to go, but you must understand that in order to understand what you don't understand, God and how he understands, and in order for you to understand who God is and how he works, you have to have faith in him and get to know him, to know and hope in an answered question. Hebrews 11.1 1 states, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence it is the evidence of things we cannot see. We might not understand the whys and the hows of life and our hearts may be flooded with unanswered questions. And we might not see the answers to those questions. But we have to have faith and confidence to trust and hope in God that when we don't understand, when we don't have the answers, when we don't know the whys, we have to have faith to keep trusting and hoping in God and that he has the answers to things we might not understand and that he has a plan for them. Even when it looks like there is no plan, even when it looks like destruction is about to take place, even when it looks like oppression is about to happen, even when it looks like I'm about to kick, get kicked out and I don't have nowhere to live and I don't know how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to make it day by day, even when we don't understand. We know that we can understand and have faith and trust in the one who is the creator of heaven and earth, our God. Habakkuk was a prophet who did not understand had many questions for God for the conditions of his people. But even in his complaints to God, even in his complaints to God, he knew who God was. He knew who he was and he knew that who to go to for the answers. And he prayed for understanding from God. He didn't just give up. He prayed for understanding for God. You know, in life, when you don't understand the whys and you don't understand the hows and, and the who's, you have to remember that God is in charge. You have to remember that God is in charge and remember that he has a plan for everything. Even when we don't understand it. God has a plan for it. God loves us too much to see us fall. God loves us too much to see us fail. God loves you too much to see you fall, to see you fail. And to see you just wither away. He loves you too much. He doesn't abandon us. He doesn't abandon our people. Even when it seems like we forgot who God was. He still loves us. He's still there for us. He still cares about us. He still shows his love towards us and his grace towards us. As the Bible says, he's married to the backslide. And so for the fact of the matter is that when you don't understand what you want to understand, what you need to understand, what you need to understand is that you have to have faith in the one who came to die on the cross for your sins. What you need to understand is that you have to have faith in the one that made you perfect in his image. The one who loves you and didn't want to see you die in sin. Y'all might not have all the answers and 
understand everything of this world, why things happen all the time in, our, in my life, just like you. There was a time where I didn't understand my purpose in life and who I was and my identity in Christ. And so in order for me to understand that, I had to go to the source. I had to go to the one, the father, the creator, the one who made me, who knew what my purpose was when he formed me. And that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. Even though we don't understand everything in our life and why things happen, we understand. And the one thing that we do know is that God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be saved and have the free gift of grace, mercy, and love and eternal life. And that's the important thing. That's the important thing. And so if you don't know the love of God and the free gift of your salvation today, I want to invite Christ into your life. I get it. You might not understand everything. You might not understand why everything happens the way it happens. But God has a plan for everything and he said it in his word. God doesn't want to see his people fail. He doesn't want to see you fall. He loves you too much. He trusts. He loves you too much. He cares about you too much because he first loved you. He first loved us. So I invite Christ into your life today. And here's the thing. If if you don't know what to do, if you don't if you if you if you you've tried praying and you've done all that, you also need a place where you can grow. You need a place where you can grow and, and, and fellowship with people who love God just as much as you do. Who can help you, who can guide you and help you understand. Because a lot of those questions that you might have, yeah, we, might, we had those same questions. But we seeked and we tried to find and went to God just like Habakkuk for prayer and understanding the answers to those questions. So let us hold your hand. Let us guide you and help you find the answers to those unanswered questions. We might not find it all, but we trust in God and we have faith in God that he will give us the answers that we need in order to understand. And that he has a greater plan for those who we don't. Let us pray. Father God of grace, mercy and love, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, for this message. We thank you, God, for those who are watching. God, right now, God, we might not understand everything. We might not understand a lot of things that happen in our life, a lot of things that happen in our world and our society, oh God. But one thing that we do know, God, and we're confident in is that we have faith and we know that you love us, oh God. And we know, God, that you have a plan for each and everything in this world. And so right now, God, help my brother, help my sister understand that plan. Help us all to understand the plans you have for our life and, and for our world, oh God. And for those things that we just don't understand, oh God. Help us to establish the faith we have in you to know that you have a greater plan. And that everything is going to be all right because you are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are the great I am. Help us to understand that, God. We love you. We thank you for all that you have done in and for our lives. These and all other things I ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for watching. We thank you for joining in with us tonight. Remember, God has a plan for what we don't understand. Love you. We thank you for watching. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you. Be blessed. Peace and love.